Let's go. Let's start, shall we, TJ? Welcome to Kumo's World. Um, and thank you for accepting my invite to come and chat with um, our community about your wonderful trading history and skills. <laughs> uh, super excited to have oh you here. Oh my regrets. Uh, <laughs> and your lessons learned. Uh, Vinzo says welcome. And uh, I mean, like, I guess you can introduce yourself and begin. Take us away. Blow us away with your awesomeness. I'm DJ. I'm a professional concept artist, freelance concept artist. Then, um, so I actually started out uh, trying to sell my own one of one NFT works. So I like, sold like three pieces, I guess. Then uh, after that, I just stopped doing that and just focus on on flipping. So like, I think most of the successful NFT traders probably started out in crypto, like like early on, and they they made a lot of money. But actually, just I actually didn't touch crypto at all. Like just like bought some Ethereum and then. Got into NFTs. So most of the capital I have now actually is just made from from flipping NFTs. So um, I think the I think the first project I minted was like Lucky Maneki, and then that was a that was a failure. I think I minted I minted a cool cat, one cool cat for zero point zero two, and then I I sold it for zero point zero four five. Or zero point zero five something like that. On that one. <laughs> I and I was like, "Whoa! <laughs> I made so much money! Like, like few, few, like hundred dollars or something. I don't know." And then, oh yeah, then like two weeks later, it like it moon, and then like, oh, it's like full of regret. Yeah, <laughs> same here. <laughs> I was like, remember when we when it minted out? I was like, oh, I accidentally minted yeah. three. Ooh, and then I sold for like you know the same as you, zero point zero four five <laughs> zero point zero five. And then when I sold it for point one, I was like, oh my god, I made so much money, <laughs> so happy. And then it was regret, insert regret a few days later, as we all know. I think I bought back in like zero point six. Then like uh, then another time where like I put a lot of money into like into like goats. But you did like, so well with the thing then. Yeah, this you is like I, I was like buying, I actually buying Ethereum just for goats, you know, and then, and then like I bought a bunch of it like like point one five, and then like the, the price tanked. So I like, actually lost money on that, but actually no, no, like actually one day, right? Like someone fat fingered an offer to me. He wanted to offer like zero point zero eight, and then he offered zero point eight instead. So I I made back my money like that from uh, someone else's mistake. And then like uh back then we were also like a bunch of us were like buying sand to buy buy sandbox land. So we were like mm -hmm. camping out for the sandbox sale, and then we, we buy land like that. And like you need to be really quick and to to get to like you because you're fighting with other people. So like I think I managed to buy like I think I managed to buy like land twice like that, and then like I bought I bought like four pieces of land for zero point four in the secondary market because they're all connected. So I like sold the other two pieces, and then I held four of them until sandbox floor was like like three ETH. So I uh, like so. I sold like all four pieces for like um how much like fifteen is total I think so that was a that was a good win. I think your biggest win was probably Oni Force. Oh yeah, that was the biggest one Oni Force. But like there was like a journey leading up to Oni Force or so. Like so um let me think what what did I do uh I think I got you into I think I got into any <laughs> any metas. Yes. Like the first week of any metal was quite crazy. Like it was pumping like hell. And then uh, I think I, I like I bought a punk a punk any metal for like one point five and sold for five ETH. Mm. So that was like my 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 first big sale. And then uh, I think I I I took that capital and then like, I bought a bunch of space poggers. <laughs> and I I, I was yeah. luck, lucky and got one like legendary like silver B. But uh, like, I failed to sell it early, and then later I managed to sell it for like four ETH to uh, to one of the whales. So like so because I I did that like I had some capital to 
to go and main only force. Then I, I oh yeah, I actually got the only force white list right, and then I, I sold two of them before reveal, but uh, before the public sale for like zero point seven ish. Then later in the public sale, I, I, I played the gas war and I got I minted seven. And then, so I, I held it until reveal right, and then I had two onis inside it, in among the seven. So like I sold I sold the onis on the. The other, okay, the Onis are the, the rarest, the rare classes in Oni Force. Then I sold two of them. I sold one for 10 ETH and one for 15 ETH. That was, that was like the first huge win for me. And it was like, wow, 25 ETH in my wallet suddenly. It was mind-blowing. But then like the, the, the Oni Force actually kept pumping. Right? If I waited a few days, I could have sold them for like 50 ETH or something. So I actually sold early. <laughs> yeah. Then I had some floor Onis, which I also sold early. Then later I bought back into Oni when it was like three ETH, and then I, I and then it pumped to like seven ETH, and then it like after seven ETH like dropped to five ETH, and then it kept dropping after that, and then I I, I sold everything else at like five ETH. So yeah, that that was my first first big win in Oni Force. But after I after I got a lot of money in Oni Force, I became like quite reckless, and then I uh, did a lot of stupid things. I like like I went and like swept projects and then like uh I failed to sell them on time and then I lost money and then <laughs> uh they like degen in a lot of nonsense that like, lost money. But like it, what... uh, you need you need to make a lot of mistakes to, to learn. To learn things yeah, the hard way. What was the biggest mistake that you made? Oh. Like so far or like <laughs> back back then? So I think what? I like I I think I spent like eight years on like Shabu Town Chibas. It was like stupid. I, I, oh, I minted that. like fifty of them. And you were at the end. You're like, and then, anyone want to buy? <laughs> and then uh, luckily I I I I got I made the I made all the money back from art blocks. Like I went to the dark blocks dark auction and and got one at the geometry runners and then I sold it for sold it for for um, how much like fifteen years or something. No wait, I, I sold it for what? How much did I sell? Ten ETH? I don't <laughs> ten or fifteen. 13, I don't remember. Right? How do you know how to play the Gas Wars? For like, like only force. Just in general, like if you're if you're if you were to go and and I guess buy into a project or mint a project that is super hyped, but and you know that there's going to be a gas war. Like, how do you go about planning that? Because it seems like you've managed to win a lot of the oh. gas wars. Well, now nowadays, like impossible. It's even harder to win gas wars because of all the bots. Ah, that's true. If it's not that bad, usually you can just um use use the met metamask um just you just speed it up. You have to look at the the gas right when the gas shoots up right, the transaction that you put in before like does it won't work anymore because the gas is too low so you just keep speeding it up and, and usually metamask calculation is um fine but if you really want to guarantee you can just uh, put even higher than that to prevent yourself from losing yeah. the, the gas <laughs> i so guess the, it the, is a lot of gas <laughs> the main thing you need to check out is the priority fee because the base fee depends on the the network condition so like um in a guess what maybe the majority of the fee will actually be the priority fee. And yeah. if you put the base fee and the and the priority you put the sorry, you put the max fee and the priority fee as the same number, right? Then it will it will take what's ev what's ever left over from the max fee and put it into the priority fee. Oh interesting. I did not know that. What was the most like, I spent on guess? Yeah. <laughs> Agent six four two zero nine asks. Uh huh. La, la, let me think. <laughs> um. What? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, back in the days before they optimized the contracts, right? It was really expensive. Yeah. Let me let me think. I think I did like Al Capone's. Maybe like spend like three thousand goy on that or something. 
but I managed to flip it for money. I guess it balances out, right? So if you're thinking of spending a lot of gas, you'd want to... Um... Oh, there was a few times where I actually regretted winning the gas war. Because, <laughs> really? because like, I paid too much gas. And then like after that, the, the secondary price was like lower than what I paid for it. <laughs> Oh no, yes, that's the thing. Like when you go into the gas war you don't yeah. you don't know because like you can't you you're not you don't have time to monitor what the floor is going yeah. to be like, right? I'm actually searching what Alka Bones is. Oh it's like a dead project. Yeah. To, <laughs> like <laughs> what? They have to migrate smart contracts and then like they can sort of die. I, yeah, there. I mean, they have good volume, just not any more. It, I mean, not the worst. But anyways, we're not we're not promoting no projects here right now. Yeah, but <laughs> these are all like these are all the the good old the the good old days. Good old days, exactly. Uh, the OG L- days. like one year ago, <laughs> less than a year ago, like. Yeah, maybe six six months ago or something. Yeah, like six months ago. A lifetime ago in, in the NFT space. <laughs> yes, the good old days then. Um, I think, yeah, like there's a lot of projects, like especially for the ones that have like major hype. People expect like instant one needs floor. And then when they don't, it's just like a dump. TJ Fu sounds like in a Singaporean language. I mean, you are Singaporean. We sound the same. Yeah. Uh, okay, so please tell me, what is your um, biggest win in, in your trading history and your biggest uh, loss? I guess my biggest win is Azuki. So like, Are you flipping the rookies like Axel? Flipping? So like, okay, like so what I did was um I actually prepared three wallets to mint Azuki. <gasps> so like, but I didn't expect it to sell out at one ETH. Because like before before this, like every single Dutch auction never didn't sell out at the top. So Azuki was yeah. like the Azuki is actually the first Dutch auction to like sell out instantly. So it was like it's quite unprecedented at the time. So like actually actually like fifteen ETH, right? And then I put it into three different wallets, and then I was I was or I put like six yeah six ETH into three different wallets. I was able to mint three three wallets. Then I I kept waiting right until like four K was minted. Then only I, I made a move. So I was, but I only managed to mint with the the one wallet. And then uh, after that I like just bought one more from secondary. So like I I had six. Then I held them uh, until after reveal. So after reveal, I think like I sold one, what the rarest one for like eight e. Then uh, then the next day I like I think I sold one for three point five and sold one for five, uh six I don't know. Uh, I think sold one for nine. And then like I just held held one more, the one the one is my PFP now. Mm-hmm. But, but I regret I... selling all of them. I should just <laughs> held. <laughs> Cause I, I sold I sold them to Ape into other projects, uh-huh. but but none of them pan out in the end. Like, yeah, like I lost so much money on Super Normal. So like, Super Normal, which one was Super that? Super no- uh, Zipsy Super Normal. Super. That was that was crazy and like it it's like five e four pre reveal. Oh yeah. Because another... like Frank C bought like fifty of them. And did you manage to sell tank so hard? There's like there's so many inexperienced flippers in in the project, and then but but they spend so much money on it, so it's crazy. I mean that's the same as you, though, right? You yeah. also spend a lot of money, so you're also crazy. <laughs> so what made you decide to just sell the Azukis as opposed to hold on to them? Oh, because um, because what happened to Oni Force? Because uh, 
Because I, I I felt like the same thing might happen again. Because only force like it went all the way to seven Eve, and then it just kept dropping after that. And then I I felt like Azuki the Azuki pump had no rationality at all. There there was like no reason for it to pump that hard, but it did anyway. Yeah, but like what made you go into Azuki? Uh, I mean, did you buy Eliza the Suna and the other uh, anime project as well? Um. I bought KGF. I minted it with uh, three wallets. And then like, I bought some more from the secondary at 0.3. You flipped them? Or yeah, I fl- uh, I, I, yeah, I flipped them later on. I held them until after reveal. Then I kept holding them. But actually, uh, yeah, I should have sold them earlier, but like, I kept holding. <laughs> the thing is that most of the time, most of the time I regret not selling early. <laughs> It's funny, it's always like the one that we hold that is, well, not always, but like the one that we sell off, it's like, oh, yeah. the hell, that one. Like, like Azuki, Azuki made me uh, fearful of selling too early. And then it made, made me like, fuck up all the other mistakes, uh, like all the other projects where I, I helped for too long. Yeah. It, it's finding that fine balance, right? Yeah, actually Azuki is like one in a million, like, so most of the time it's better just to take profits. And maybe just hold hold a few and and see what happens. I only have my one Azuki, so. You still have one left. Yeah, I I only have one, so like I can take profits, but there's that kind of FOMO in me, like oh, but what if? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you know that feeling. So it's like you know the same with Liza of Asuna, where I was like oh, but what? If? And now the Liza of Asuna has just you know. I always re- I always look at my lives of a student in my wallet and go, this is a lesson to be learned. <laughs> <laughs> but it is what it is, right? And like, how do you how do you determine which project to um to to go into? Um, I guess the main main thing is like the art. Um. Now, now, recently, I haven't really been aping into many projects. Like, I saw Everi and actually liked the project, but then, uh, but I didn't buy it because, uh, what happened? Like, the flippers destroyed the floor price after the sale. So, like, I wasn't so confident in it, but actually, it, it bounced back very nicely. Um, yeah, first thing is like maybe look at see see if I if I if I would be fine having it in my wallet. If like if it's ugly, then I won't buy it. That's like the most simple thing. And then like yeah. maybe look at the roadmap. Like what what do they have in the plan in the future? Are they gonna do more airdrops or release a token or like all the all the standard things? Yeah. Like nowadays, like, there's lots of projects that have the same things with the roadmap. So what kind of differentiates? I guess it's just the art, is it? That that you think? Uh, I have of- no idea. It's. It's all uh, it's all gambling now. It's like coin flip now. Just buy all the Azuki uh copies. Yeah, but they seem to be doing well though, right? So it's really hard to tell because it's all because of these like flippers that are coming in. Yeah, I think I think the 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 NFT market has like the collectibles market has is quite different now compared to a few months ago. Like it's not it's not as fun as it used to be because people For keep sure. wrecking the floor. <laughs> It's like there's like too many people who who are not who suck at holding, right? Like they just just get like point zero one profit and then they're happy. And then the, the floor cannot the floor cannot move on unless you have like a thousand sales an hour. Yeah. And then when the sales slow down they start they start undercutting and destroying the floor. Yeah. It's funny because they they don't wait for like 24 hours it's literally the second that they buy it they're selling it for like such a small profit and then they don't even count in the the gas that they have to spend to to mint or to to sell yeah yeah, i think a lot of them don't even know about royalties i think yeah (laughs) especially if it's like high royalties and then you have the open sea gas or the open sea fee and then you also have the fee to, um, I guess, approve or to approve the collection. Uh, not approve the collection, yeah. but you know when 
have to sell the very first time from that collection. You have to have a fee to pay, right? Yeah. So there's, there's all that to take into account, and you're like, you're selling it for that small little, like you're selling at a loss, basically. Yeah, even even the beginning of Kumo, like after you sold out, it got destroyed by all the flippers or so. Yeah. And then like I, and I then... see I see I keep looking at IC right like I keep seeing Kumo pump and, and dumb and pump and dumb. It's, like, it's so sad. <laughs> then... It was funny because then people were selling at zero point zero two and I'm like, you guys, would you not rather hold it? Because you're not making any money at all. Or or like, you know, and then and then there was that, you know, people would DM me after their uh there were some people who DM me after we pumped to like 0.7 or something, and like, oh, I'm so sad. I accidentally sold your NFT at like 0.03, and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do about that, you know. So it's like, if if you're not going to be making a profit, then don't sell. I always say, don't sell at a loss. <laughs> Non-believers, but but you also need to cut losses sometimes. Yeah, but I mean, if you're going to be selling at 0.02, which is yeah. basically nothing anyway, because you have to, I mean, I mean, I'm, oh, I guess I mean 0.02 is is some money for for some people, yeah. right? But at the same time, you're not really cutting losses because of the gas that you had to pay to buy in the first place. And so, like the the ultimate goal, everyone's ultimate goal, right, is to buy buy at the bottom and sell at the top. Yeah. That's why, like, um, now I, I think the, the safest thing to do, right, is to never buy anything that is pumping. Yeah. Like, amen. some, like, sometimes, um, sometimes it'll keep going up, but most of the time, it won't. Yeah. So, like, always wait until the sales slow down. Until the sales are almost dead. Then, then you, then that's probably the best price to enter. Yeah. As long as you're not, um, I mean, it really depends, right? Because then there's that. But what if it doesn't go down? <laughs> like, like one thing where I made this, where it kept going out was like three lenders. I I saw yeah. it at like, at like a zero point six. Okay, it went it went down to zero point four at the bottom, and then it went back up to zero point six. So I like that. Okay, maybe the next day the the paper hands are gonna tank the floor some more, and then it'll be zero point three, and then I can buy in. And then when I woke up the next morning, it was like one ETH floor, and then like, oh fuck. So, yeah, sometimes you 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 end up regretting it, but like it's better, it's safer just not to just not to buy into the pump. And if like if something is like below zero point one, right? There's like you, the panic sellers are even more extreme because they're they're all like they're all like uh like McDonald's flippers, like they they need to they need to buy their their next meal, so like they cannot afford to lose any money. Mm-hmm. Like the during the weekend, during huh? the weekend, I saw Tsuki, you know Tsuki, the the the, the one with all the waifus. Oh yeah. I th- I think the floor was like zero point zero two, like point zero three before, and then like during the Azuki pumps, it went up to like over like zero point one five. Like when all the, like, I thought I thought it was recovering already, and then like like now it's back to zero point zero three, like back to where it was before the pump. It's like yeah. everyone tried to, tried to exit. I didn't exit in time. <laughs> I fail to exit these things, sadly. I don't usually buy into the pumps, but when I do, I always struggle to like sell. You know, you know what the thing is? Like I buy and then I'm like, but it's actually really cute. I think I kind of like it. And then I, I forget to sell it because I'm like, oh, well, you know, if anything, I like it. And then when it dumps into like you know way below what I bought it for, I'm like, oh dang, I should have sold it, you know. Yeah, like I get it. Like you, you, you're gonna say like, oh, I like the art, I love this project, but you only say that when when the project is up. Yeah. Then when it, when it goes <laughs> down, right, you you realize that you would prefer to have E. Yeah. Instead of that. instead of a JPEG. Yeah, that is very true. It's always the case. It's always it's emotional trading. Exactly, Chubby. Like, we get attached yeah. to our JPEGs. <laughs> and Yang is like, I would rather wipe my tears with these. 
Yeah, so like because I keep I, I keep project buying projects that I like, so I, I it's hard for me to sell them. So I end up I end up back holding. Yeah, I I really feel you on that. I bought so many projects that I'm like, oh, I didn't like it, so I'm I'm not sure how to. Eat. Like um, there's well, I mean it's not all bad, but there have been a lot of projects that I've bought to flip. And then I don't flip, and then I just end up with a bag, and more NFTs, and no, no, and no, no ETH because I'm not selling. <laughs> <laughs> so my bag is accumulating um, during like these, you know, pumps or whatever. And then I'm like, oh, I need to sell. Oh, what I can't. Which one do I sell? They're all so cute. That's the thing with like buying NFTs that you actually like, right? So yeah, I just like. It's a it's a very painful, it's a very fun fun and painful journey. Then yeah. I also I also like to buy things before reveal and hold them until after reveal because because I like gambling. <laughs> so I I just like I just like, like it's like the the addiction to like opening booster packs or or buying loot boxes. Uh-huh. Like you just want you just want to see what you get. Yeah. It's a it's a expensive gamble, <laughs> depending on what you pay for. I, if I didn't hold Azuki and Oni Force, right, I wouldn't have made so much money from that. That Sometimes is it's really worth holding. Yeah, that is very true, actually. Yeah, but then there are times where you're like, dang, I should have sold before that. Yeah, like, like, like super normal, normal. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> we learn. We learn from our uh, our endeavor. Um. Yeah, I yeah. I'm just I don't know. I always find like it really hard to So do you would you recommend like selling some if you, if you made more than one, right? Sell one before or sell some before reveal and hold some for after reveal. But then the thing is never check what you Like sold. I I don't like to do that also because you're thinking like oh, either I sell or I don't sell any. Oh really? Because if, if you if you sell like what if you sell the wrong one, right? You don't know which one's yeah, the rare one. <laughs> <laughs> the pain that goes yeah. with that. Oh, dang it. <laughs> Either you sell them all or you don't sell any. That's, that's what I think. <laughs> it's, it's always a hard choice, right? But I guess like if the art was... Like for example, for Three Land, I knew that the art was going to be good. So, I mean, I did sell one before... Um, before... Uh, before Mint. Is it? I sold one before a reveal. And then afterwards, I sold, I sold two of them post reveal, but I kept one. Uh, but then it's like, oh, but I mean, what if I got a rare? Is always like you know echoing in the back of my head. What if you got a rare? You sold a rare. That's why I didn't sell the Dookie. That's why I didn't sell the Dookie. Two two. Um. Exia says, how do you guys feel about selling pre-reveal because usually there will be a dump and re-entry below pre-reveal price? Um, if you don't think you, if you don't want to gamble, you can sell it before reveal and then buy back afterwards. I guess that would it's, be It's really up to you if you, if you like, if you like gambling. And also if Just, you really like the project. That's why you want to buy pre-reveal, like you need to you need to enter at a good price. Oh, so but I shouldn't sell because I believe in the project. But then it dumps post reveal, and I'm just like, dang, I believe in the project. I would have bought back in anyways. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. I think. Yeah, if like art and and having a rare is not your your main gamble. We're not giving financial advice, by the way. We're just conversations. <laughs> this is conversational. <laughs> um. Uh, Dan WL says, but how do we know when to sell pre-reveal? Um, um, okay, like, 
Uh, it's hard to tell. Like maybe I think before pre-reveal, right, it'll actually start dumping a bit because people are, are anticipating the post-reveal dump, so they're like trying to get out quick. So like, uh, maybe you sell it like uh, within a day before reveal, if you want to sell it. Always sell during the pump, not during the dump. And and don't wait until the sales starts slowing down because that's when the undercutting starts. Yeah. And maybe maybe you might want to undercut first before everyone else undercuts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's really hard to know, right? Because then sometimes, like I was watching, um, like Pepo Paradise, um, one of our partners, uh, when they were when they were having their pump and it pumped to like point four eight or something and this all happened within like 30 minutes so it was like a super fast pump but then it was a super fast dump afterwards and so like people were selling so much so much and then if you kind of i guess like how do you know what to set the sell price at during the pump because you don't want to set it too high so that you don't sell it and then when it starts to dump then it will never hit that price as such if you want to sell during the pump if you get what I mean. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to sell it too high. It's better, like, there's many times where I completely failed to sell it because I, I, kept trying, I kept listing it too high and then it kept dropping and then I kept lowering the price but I never lowered it below the floor so I was just keep chasing the floor and then I, in the end, in the end, I, I wish I, I, I just listed it at a lower price in the beginning. Mm. Like, yeah. if, the, if it pumps above what you sold it at, like, don't, don't, there's no need to regret that. Because you you cannot predict the when the top is. Yeah, exactly. Like if you if you make profit, then just be happy with it. Yeah, profit is profit at the end of the day. Because like, if you if you sell at the pump, see, thing is, when you're selling during the pump, you can sell at a higher price than the floor price, right? But if you're selling during the dump, then you have to. Under, undercut because you want to be the first to sell during that dump so it's really hard to, yeah. but then you never know but th then you never know because then during the dump it might pump again and you're like oh dang it I, sh I should have kept my price happened to me so many times not that I do flip a lot I'm, I'm not I'm not a flipper as you can tell by my activity <laughs> that's why that's why now I'm like kind of tired of flipping it's like really stressful sometimes like you get you get adrenaline high when you when you make a good flip, but when you fuck up, it also feels really bad. I feel you on that one. I remember we were flipping um cool cast. Remember we were flipping them at like point <laughs> six or something. You're like, oh, did oh, yeah, you get yeah. oh, my God. <laughs> That was that was fun though. Like that was fun. That was like during the pump ride. We were like, I think I just spent like maybe two days flipping cool cats and. That was at point six yeah. Ethereum. I kept buying it like I kept buying cool at point six and selling it at point nine. Yeah, that was that was so crazy. That was like it was it just seemed so easy at the time because right, that was during like the bull run and everyone wanted it. And I think we were just I mean like how do you know which one to buy? Do you buy like obviously at the time we weren't buying floor floor ones. Yeah. We were kind of buying the second to the floor rarity, I guess you could say. The green ones, I think. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like now, now I think why well, one um a less stressful strategy, right? Is you you wait for you wait for a bear market, and then you you look for strong projects that are that have like kind of dumped a bit, but they're still holding. That like the floor is still stable, like that like the 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 floor dropped a lot, but it's still stable. And then you you can go and buy into those projects. If you think that it's at the the all time low, yeah, like like you, if you look at Kumo Kumo World, right? I think like a few days ago the floor was like point one. Yeah, but if you look at the number of listings, right, it's like like the the difference between point one and point one five, right? It's like only like maybe like twenty listings. So um okay like like one 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 thing right a lot of uh, a lot of all of newbies, they see the floor drop, right? And they start panicking. But like the floor, the floor is just one listing, right? Like it's just one, one person undercutting and then they, they start panicking. Like one, one listing doesn't define the floor, right? It's only, 
the real floor is like where there's like a huge cell wall, like where where there's like a there's a lot of listings. Like someone listed like twenty of them at this price. It's like that that's probably the real floor. Mm-hmm. So you you always see like resist resistance points at like like round numbers like point one, point one five, point two. Gotcha. So like maybe like few like last week maybe you saw Kumo at point one, then that's a good buy also. You just go around looking for undervalued projects in the in, during the bear market. And then you just hold them until they pump. It's coming. <laughs> like during so, the like la- last year there was like a really long bear market during uh, September, I think. Yeah. September, October. So during that time, right, I just kept buying Fox fans. I I had like yeah, 30 Fox fans. <laughs> Then when the bull market came back, like I, I sold a bunch of them for money. Now I have like fifteen. I think that was like one of the only smart thing, smart plays I did, <laughs> like long term plays. I remember and, like, you were telling me how to do. During that that bull market, I saw like Al- Alpha Cadabras at like point one or so, but I didn't buy it. I thought about it, but I didn't buy it. Then I saw, oh, the the, the worst mistake, the the biggest miss I uh, had was like I saw. Slim hoods at zero point zero, like below min price. I, I think like point zero three. Oh. And oh, I, I, I like knew it. they were part of random character collective. I knew they were associated with uh, invisible friends, but I, I didn't buy oh. any. Oh dear. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think that was like a huge opportunity, like right in my face, and I, I didn't do it. Yeah, I remember they were. Like when they were going to uh, at the start when they were uh, minting, I was like the first one hundred in their Discord. But um, my internet, they were they were taking wallets, right? They're like, okay, we're opening the the wallet submission channel now. And then I yeah. went in, I submitted my wallet, right? But my internet broke at that time, and I'm like, <laughs> and then it didn't get submitted, and then they closed it within like you know two minutes, and I was like, I could have been in the minting process but it is what it is yeah and then i just went i was so salty about that i was like whatever i'm not i'm not going to, <laughs> to mint or like to buy in secondary whatever even though it went below mint price i'm not, I'm not gonna buy it <laughs> i'm salty because of my internet it means it's nothing to do with the project it's really just my own um, my own saltiness but oh, young yeah. young mentioned mutant shiba club yeah <laughs> i don't understand what happened to mutant shiba club that was they had so many sales, and then it just kept dipping for no <laughs> reason. I'm looking at it right now. 10k project. I mean, it's it's still unrevealed, actually. Oh, you're saying that it pumped, and you don't know why it pumped or it dumped? No, like it dumped. Like everyone expected yeah. it to be to to go to the moon. Really? Yeah. Yeah. People thought it was like over one E floor or something. It was a really high project. People were grinding like hell for whitelist. I mean, I mean, people. I feel like people these they just grind whitelist for every project that they that they hear about. Yeah, but like most of them are not worth grinding anymore. No, it's not like January. No. Back then, was grinding was like the you would be grinding for like really good project, but now you have to grind yeah. for every project. I think grinding was like guaranteed win for for most projects. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of projects. That, the thing is, it's so stupid. Like people, they grind for their whitelist, right? For these like projects, whatever projects it is. But then the second that they get it, they sell it for point zero one profit, and you're like, not even profit, like just for like maybe point zero one above the the mid price or point zero two, and you're like. You spent how many months grinding for that whitelist? Is is this all little so called profit? Um, you know the value of the time that you spent grinding. Um, yeah, exactly. They start hiring grinders. Um, to to yeah, actually, like the the original point of of whitelist grinding, right, was to was to select members of the community that are dedicated to the project. But actually, what what happens now is you just end up with people who who just want to flip. They don't care about the project. They just like, 
they just fake engagement and then they get their whitelist and then they stop engaging and then they mint it and they, they just flip it immediately. Yeah. I think it's it's really hard for new projects now to to build a community if you have whitelist. Um if you have like, you know, whitelisting in your project. It's it's really hard to build a community these days anyway, just because of the toxicity I think associated now. I mean it really depends. Um but yeah. Flippers are I mean, it's good for the project, right? But it also damages the project depending on how they flip. <laughs> flippers are good to an extent, but if they are inexperienced flippers that are flipping without thinking, it's almost like they get a high from just the second they sell like, oh, I'm selling an NFT. <laughs> Not, I don't care about profit, I'm just selling it. <laughs> yeah. All projects also like, stupidity is contagious. <laughs> like, like one one person is smart, a whole group of people are stupid. Yes. Like one person undercuts, and then everyone just follows. Yes, exactly. That's kind of like what happened with the the Kumo floor when we first sold out, right? Because obviously, Broken Sea lived up to its name of being Broken Sea, and then it it stayed. The floor price stayed at zero point zero seven, even though the floor was like point one two, point two, whatever it was. And then because the inexperienced um, traders didn't know that OpenSea can be broken, they're like, oh, the floor price isn't rising. Why is it still at zero point zero seven? Oh, now it's time to undercut because it's not rising. And then they start selling lower and lower and lower. And like you said, people just undercut and undercut and then it just went down and people were like what's happening with the coon brother like, i don't know guys i'm not something that i can control this is i cannot think for these wonderful smart people yeah this, this is why people like to buy projects with smart buyers um it's not it's yeah. not because oh you're just following them because they know what they're they know what's going on it's because right the smart buyer right they they have like uh, like like blue chip holders right they have they probably they probably have a lot of capital. They're not in a hurry to to sell for profit or to cut their losses, so they're willing to hold for long term. Mm. Like you saw, three lenders, right? Like like some doodle holders sold their doodles to to just sweep the the floor. Yeah. So when you see something like that happen, right? It makes you very bullish because yeah. like it's the the project is changing hands from flippers to long term holders. That's when you know, like, yeah, I guess it, it it depends on, like, who, sometimes it's good to see, like, who's buying into the project, right? Like, yeah. are they flippers that are buying into the project, or are they long-term holders? Yeah, so every project also needs to start like that. It needs to, uh, it needs to go through the transition period, the growing pains, where they, mm. where they weed out the flippers. Yeah. So you need to be patient, right? Like, when, like... During the beginning, maybe the floor will tank and then you won't see it move for a long time. But that's normal. Like you need to go through this period for for a while before the the price can go up. Yeah, like for Kumo's world, especially when we were at zero point zero two floor, um, there was actually a lot of people who were like sweeping the floor every day, um, because obviously it was so low. <laughs> It was like practically nothing for some people. They're like, oh yeah, sweep the floor. And then when we pumped to like 0.7, that's when people were like, you know, taking profits. Um, there you and then yeah, they start we were... dumping the floor back to 0 0.02. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just like, you know, it's, it's a, we don't, we don't like, you know, uh, scrutinize people for, um, for, for taking profits. Like it is, it is, yeah. um, it is what it is, right? Like, I would take profits too, and then you can buy back in when the floor is lower. Um, yeah, I mean, they're asking <laughs> what the floor... The lowest floor we were at was 0 0.018. That was the lowest floor that we had. Um, and then we were actually at 0 0.02 for, I think, like, several weeks. Um, and... Yeah, wasn't it several? I'm pretty sure it was for several weeks. Like we were at zero point, we were kind of wavering between zero point zero two and zero point zero three for about like two, three weeks, maybe maybe a month or something like that. Um, 
but like it didn't stop us we were we were still kind of doing our own thing and we were not too like focused on people were always asking so when's kuma gonna pump the floor and we're like uh we don't pump floors i'm sorry yeah when every time the floor dips right everyone just blames the devs like devs do something (laughs) devs please do something you need you need to do something it's your fault (laughs) you made them thank you made the flippers undercut the floor I'm just like, yeah, thanks, thanks, guys, thanks. I mean, appreciate your concerns and and your your um, support for the project. But I mean, you know, we can't really control that. And then obviously we pumped then in January when when it was like that bull market for for cute things, right? Um, and then they're like, what did Kumo do? I'm like, well, I didn't do anything. Like it's just the same thing that we're always doing. Um, so. I, that's why I just believe in like just you just keep building and obviously we're we're focusing on like the marketing part as well but like there are things that we can't control even though people think that we do have control over it it really isn't up to us so same with most projects right it's it's really the people who are buying and flipping that or the holders that are, are I guess whether they support your project in the long term or not so it's hard to know which projects are going to be like that. So I like I, that's why I'm very bad at flipping because I just I just hodl most of my projects that I I buy into. Sadly, that's what means like a lot of ETH just flushing away. <laughs> so so how did that? Huh? Go for it. Dan's asking, uh, what what and what I'm looking into now? Yeah, what are you looking into now? <laughs> No, and I'm just buying Huxley comics. Cause I, I think the floor is at the, the lowest now. Did you mint it? Um so with Huxley, right? Yeah. Huxley, I actually I was one of the like the, the, the early members, so I got like a the whitelist, the free mint. Wait, I better type that. Oh yeah. Oh so, you, you uh, got the free mint? Yeah, I got a free mint. I made it like issue one. And then it, it took like two months to sell out because it, they... I, okay, so first I, I minted like... I was one of the, I was the second person to mint. So my, my mind was like issue serial number uh, 12. Ooh. So I knew it would be valuable later. So I just held it until the... They did this uh, burn event where you have to take five uh, Huxley issues and then... you. You assemble it into a so-called Genesis block, and then you burn two of them. So two of the issues are gone, and you keep three of them. And then you get a Genesis token. So this Genesis token, right, was later on used to redeem their their robot avatars. It's like a collection of only 1,000, and all the robots are handmade by Ben Morrow, the, the founder. So they didn't really sell out until the, the burn event started. So there was, like, there was really a long-term hold. And then like all the people yeah. who, who who bought in early, right? Who got all the low low uh the low serial number issue ones are, are like very valuable now. Yeah, the, the robot floors are like four E's. Yeah, then later they did the the issue two they, they did issue two minting, like another ten K and then they did issue three minting, another ten K. I think a month ago the issue two floor is almost point four, now it's like point two. Issue three was like yeah. point over point three. Or was it? Now like happened? issue two and issue three are about the same price. I think that the next burn event, right? You need to like you need to burn two issue twos, two issue threes, and one issue one. And the to get what get just token. Yeah, because wasn't there like. Um, sorry, I'm gonna say Yabi. Yabi, can you mute your mic, please? I think there's some noise coming in. If not, I will. Oh, they were awesome. like a really hardcore like movie trailer on on YouTube, and they have um, I think they're gonna make a game also. So there's a lot of things planned. Oh. I think the the burn event might happen this week, so like it might be a good time to buy. Uh, no, 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 it's not this week. Sorry, this month. They they haven't announced the date yet. They're gonna they're gonna have a Twitter Spaces on Thursday, and maybe they will they will announce the the date of the burn. 
the the, the burn week. What does the burn do again? Uh, you you like you burn you burn some comics to get the Genesis token, and then you you re, you redeem Genesis token for the avatar. So after the robots, right? They're gonna do the human avatars another thousand. I mean, the why issue don't people one. Fl- just buy- Sorry, go for it. Uh, I think the issue one floor was actually one point four at one point. Now it's like 0. 0.8, 0. 0.9. If I were to buy the, <laughs> this is like, yes, we are. We're not promoting Huxley Comics. We're just having a conversation about it. <laughs> so I mean, right. Huxley I... issue three, right? Would you yeah. not just buy three of them? Because then you say you have to like burn them, right, to get a, a Genesis. Yeah, so Genesis right them. now. Is you need what? Yeah, you need to burn two of them. Two of them, right? So the Genesis floor is two point five, but the yeah. issue three, I guess, the lowest floor price for that is point one nine one. So would you not just buy two comics and then get a token? As opposed to buy the token for two point five, like why is it set so high? Oh, you the the tokens are worth buying now. Because you can you can assemble all the issues to burn for a token with less money, like one point, maybe one point five to one point seven. Yeah. Anyway, this is just one example of something like this, is like a really long term project. Like you actually take months and 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 years to finish all the the like the whole roadmap. But the the mm. price is actually, price is stable, so like you're not gonna stress out too much, I guess. Yeah, seems like they're doing they're doing well. This is like a big project, right? It seems like there's lots of like complicate not complications, like a lot of things that they put thought into of how to to do their whole launch and the burning to- the tokenomics, I guess. Yeah. Of the the project. Yeah. Then there's like there's three. 3.6k owners is quite crazy. Yeah. And I, it's like if you look at the holder count, right? It's like a bunch of whales with a shitload of comics. Like there's like hundred, yep. like there's a bunch of holders with hundreds of comics. Yep. And then there's only two hundred and seven items yeah. listed out of those. Yeah, that's, it's like one percent listed. Yeah. Like, I, like you, you, you almost never see that happen for any collection. Especially at 27k. This is a lot of holders that they have there. <laughs> wow, what if they dump? Yeah, if they dump, then that's... <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of floors to be listed at. There's a lot of dumping, but it's a lot of sweeping also. There is. There's a lot of people that keep buying. Yep. Like, like, board ape holders. Yeah. Like, they seem to know what they're getting into yeah geez that's that's the risk yeah glt that is the risk the gamble game right oh thanks exia thanks for joining us love you yeah so i guess like um I guess we're we're we've reached like the one hour. Wow, TJ, we talked for one hour on this topic. Can you believe that? You're like, what do I talk about? <laughs> um, does anyone have any questions? Actually, I know we've been kind of throwing questions in the residents' chat, but does anyone have any questions that they'd like to ask? In case you didn't know that you could ask questions. Um, to TJ, sorry, I'm also reading as well. There's several people typing. Oh, we can keep talking, right? <laughs> you can keep so talking. Be one hour, I don't know. <laughs> Topper, how big is your nose? <laughs> um, did he mention tools? Yeah, what tools do you use when you're looking into investing in, in different projects, I guess? Um, I just look at IC every day. I don't even subscribe to it. I just look at the trending page. 
And do you buy into those projects that are trending? Usually? No, I just I just observe for fun. <laughs> You're like, which which one? Hum, hum. So there's a lot of like a lot of projects that are on there all the time. Um GLT asks, in this market, do you think flipping most projects and just choosing and holding blue chips is the way? Um, I think if you have enough liquidity, right, you might... Oh, this, this depends on what you, what you enjoy doing. Now I feel like I'm sick of flipping. So it's better just to buy things that are like longer term. Yeah, like, uh, I, I remember Nanopass was like 0 0.7 at one point, and I only bought one. So I, I wish I just bought more and, and held it until now. If you can like if you can find projects like that and you, you, you really believe in them. Maybe you can you can buy some and just hold them. What? Is there FUD? What FUD? What FUD do they have? I didn't know that there was FUD. Do you know of that FUD? Is that fun now? Is that why I draw the four E? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's still higher than it was before. Oh, that's what... I don't know what the FUD was. I know past Julia. No. What Julia accident or incident? I mean, it seems like, you know, people buy on rumors, they buy on the, you know, and they sell on, on also rumors. Oh but, my god, um, you, were you there when the, the, the cool cat rumor happened? Like two days no, ago? What happened? There was a rumor, right, that Yuga Labs was going to buy cool cats. And then it just started pumping for no, like, because of that rumor. It pumped to like 9.5 ETH. And then the, the people who spread the rumor, like, they, they had Twitter spaces, and then the, the Queenie, the committee manager for Cool Cats, went on, and then she said, no, it's not, it's not true. And then, like, every, like, the people who just bought, like, half an hour ago started dumping it. Stupid. That's the, the stupidest thing ever. I, I mean, like, Cool Cats... Cool cats are always going to be a blue chip, but then like yeah. the highest that it ever went to was like fifteen or seventeen ETH. Do you think that it will ever go back up to that price? Oh uh, man, I have no idea. Though. It's really hard to tell, right? I mean, they need to. Like, they mean, just need to release the game, and then we'll see. I'll be happy yeah. if it goes to a twelve ETH. Did you what did you say? You I'll be like happy 12 if it goes to a twelve ETH. Yeah. Um. Oh, so the oh one of the like, team members Julia yeah. was impersonating to be someone else. Sorry, go for it. I interrupted you there. I was just reading. Like, I I guess you don't have money for for blue chips. Like you try to find. It's hard to, it's hard to see what what will, what what is a good hold. Like three lenders is quite stable if you can afford that. Like like yeah. it was like one point five not long ago. Could have been a good buy at that time. Yeah. Um. I don't know, maybe Zombie Club. I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen to Zombie Club. It yeah, could go know. up. Maybe Cool Man's. Alien Friends has been quite stable, but it hasn't pumped yeah. or anything. Cool Man's is quite low now. Yeah. Koji, but Koji but these projects are still all over one ETH. Yeah, Koji saying it's going to be surprising Tom. Because you can't even come from like one something to three something just a few days ago or maybe yesterday. I think. Come on, are you speaking to us? I am! Sorry! Am I, am I really far are away? Are you far away? <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm coming. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just grabbing some breakfast for the back though. <laughs> um, sorry. Yeah, I was saying that pudgy penguins, they pumped because they switched yeah. over to like owner that was that was surprising i didn't expect that pump to happen so fast yeah, after after they they after the owners sold them they, they dropped like below one ETH, eh? and a lot of people mm. bought in because they they believe it will, will pump back up 
Uh, yesterday, it, Starcatchers had a lot of fun also. It dropped to like 0. 0.15. Yeah. Do you buy in? Nope. That one. Yeah, I don't know. It's oh, hard I... to say it's what, what is, what's a good buy. Hmm. A lot of projects are quite cheap now compared to their all-time high. Yeah. But you, you, you need to see if they're going to keep, de- keep delivering or not. Like, I remember seeing Alien Friends and Coleman's when they were at, like, 0.08 or something. But, I mean, like you said, art is the, is something that I'm oh. like, oh, if I like the art, I'll buy it. I remember seeing Coleman's and Alien Friends, like, mm, I just can't bring myself to buy it. <laughs> it's not <laughs> my style of art that I like. Yeah. I remember I was looking at their floor for ages at 0.08. I'm like, ugh. I don't understand the hype or the pump or anything, but I mean, now I regret it. Obviously, it's kind of growing on me, but it's always that case where when it's pumping, you're like, oh, it's okay. I can actually see it being cute or whatever, but I mean, it is what it is, right? And same with World of Women. I remember seeing them at 0.06 floor, and I was like, oh, I don't, I don't particularly like them. But I should probably buy one or two to support the the women thing. That was a surprising pump. Although I think it was like people saw it coming. Oh yeah, GLT mentioned former morphos. I bought a lot of those. I had like, I think I bought like ten before reveal. Did you buy it during the during the oh during the pre reveal? I bought it like about zero point three uh, before reveal. Was it? I failed to you sell at the it? top. Did you sell at the top? I failed. I saw in the middle. Oh, okay. <laughs> the top I was at like, top was at point eight. It happened twice. Yeah. And I like the art a lot, so it's hard to sell it. Yeah, I love the FOMO Movo art. I'm just reading everyone's comments now. I like the tasty <laughs> bones art also, but then it got wrecked wrecked by paper hands. Yeah, Tasty Bones is so nice, the art is. I'm surprised that people were, you know... The people handing a Tasty Bones was unprecedented. You just can't... You just don't know. They're, they're the ones that will surprise you with the floor. I'm sorry. I'm also just reading comments. Oh, yeah. Do you see uh, Art of Seasons? Art of what? Art of Seasons. No, what is that? It's a pretty nice that art. One. It's like it's like pumping today. Art of what? I'll post the link. Oh, art of seasons. The art of seasons. Oh, they're actually quite nice. They're minting. No, it uh, we minted like what a few days ago, a week ago. And the, uh, the, oh, it's nine days ago, right? The floor, the floor got wrecked really hard. It was like uh, down to like point zero five or something. Even though they, mm. it was it started quite strongly before reveal, and then it dumped like hell after that. No, I'm not saying it's it not. I'm not saying it's time to buy now. <laughs> no, because it's pumping now, right? Yeah. Also, not saying don't buy. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You told me not to buy, and then it just goes like to the moon, right? I'm saying, like, in hindsight, this this would have been a good buy. <laughs> yes, in hindsight. But, like, it's not all unique. As in, some yeah, of them yeah, a lot the of them are the same. Yeah, why is that? It's not gender. It is a but partial It's all gender. unique, all right? You can't, you can't make all of them. You can't, like, make it generative. Oh, wait, so what, what kind of uh, doing you a whole, doing a PFP project and you get a whitelist from it. Uh, got you. I'm confused. And like Everai is doing very well now too. You know Everai, right? They they did a Dutch auction starting at zero point three for their public sale. It sold out instantly. And then people started selling at like point one seven after the, the public sale was over. Remember seeing that why is it pumping now? Um, I don't know. People keep buying. 
yeah, a lot, a lot of big money buying it. Again, I saw this at point one, and I was like, the art. I'm sorry. <laughs> it. I'm looking at it now. I'm like, it's very plain. This is why I don't understand why some projects pump and why some projects don't because I know Kuma is very critical. <laughs> art. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, all all the flaw advice are like kind of say me. Like, yeah. Remind me of Mechaverse. Yeah, I have to say. I mean, like, I don't see anything which is like, wow, I have to get that one. It's like, oh, yeah, they're, they're okay. Oh, I, ho- <laughs> I hope the founder is not here or the artist is like, Kayla was shitting on my project. <laughs> I'm not shitting on anyone's project. I'm saying personally, um, the artists work for renowned anime, so maybe that's why. Ah, but, but okay, happy, so happy they're doing well. I was actually, yeah. I actually had my eye on this project before their sale, and then I, I saw it. I saw like the floor got wrecked, and then I, oh, I, okay, better not buy. And now, now I regret it. I mean, there's always that post post pump regret, right? I'm not saying that their art is not good. I'm just saying it's very much the same. <laughs> What's a kuma? This this has turned into like a we're critis we're criticizing project <laughs> workshop. Yeah. Akuma looks like looks looks more like only for us. Oh, do they? See, there's just so many projects like derivative projects that I just don't understand. Like, I just I guess I just don't do enough research into um projects. Um. Especially when they are very much derivative projects. I'm like, hmm. Yeah, a lot of these are pumping because of Azuki, basically. Yeah. And Mori, Akuma, um, what's the other one? Uh, what's the other one? Uh, shit. I don't know. Forgot the name. Kiwami. Kiwami, yeah, Kiwami. (laughs) Oh, Kiwami. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a bit it's a bit crazy how some projects pump because of other projects pumping. I mean, it's like how oh, I can't afford to enter this project, so I'm gonna buy a cheap derivative. That's how most most of these derivatives pump. Well, like, I, I don't know. Desuki. I feel like I find it really hard to buy derivative projects. <laughs> and like, I'd like to buy you, but you're so like the the doodle derivatives makes me makes me um, you know, confused. I uh, one one of my rules is just don't buy derivatives. Yeah, like the grandpa apes. You know, what's that one called? The the, the, I don't know what they're called. Uh, for There's retirement like, club, a yeah. I remember seeing that at point zero eight, and I'm like, it's literally board a yacht club with wrinkles. You know, it's like, it it's what you call low effort art. <laughs> and then I'm just like, ah, and then it pumped to point three, and I was like, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm I'm a bit salty, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't, I I don't understand. Kumo's always in this kind of. That's why I'm a bad flipper because I get emotionally attached to the art. I'm like, ah. <laughs> sorry, I'll stop talking now. This is a TJ free workshop, not a Kuma ranting workshop. <laughs> um, now we're just talking about random projects. Yeah, we're just, I mean, like chill bears, right? What are your thoughts on chill bears? Oh, yeah, chill bears, chill bears pumped like yesterday, and now it's chill a lot. Chilling, it's chilling at a table at, at a, 0.15. Yeah, I remember seeing the art and I'm like, this is like cool cats in bear form. Like I mean, a lot of yeah, like doodles, like a lot of the projects are using either like cool cat kind of art with doodle colors and doodle kind of ah, I don't know. Don't listen to me, guys. I'm just gonna stop talking. (laughs) 
Yeah, I think that's the thing. Like they find projects like that. Like I think, the, yeah, I think that's probably one of the reasons why they pumped was because of Tokoa. thing with influencers if if you're on their good in their good books they they just need to make a tweet about you and then your floor goes boom and they can also make a tweet about you if if you if they don't like you and then just say i don't understand why this is doing this and then it just goes down you know they can they can like basically make be the make or break of your project but the core is supporting funkles also Funkles is quite it's pretty undervalued. cheap. Yeah, undervalued, I think. Yeah, Funkles is very cheap. But I think the reason why it happened was because it took so long for them to actually launch. They kept postponing. Like, um, it did well before reveal, though. Like It went up to point two. After reveal, it dumped a lot. Yeah. But, but like with Funkles, like, the supply is so low and the listings are so low. Like It's very easy to pump it. Yeah, but like I think it was. Oh, I mean, like only, only like, was it four days ago? The floor was at point zero three. Yeah, it went up to point one not long ago. Yeah, it went up to point one, the, and then it went all the flippers up. are dumping, you know. Yeah. But like I remember there was so much hype about the project and then it just started to die. But then I guess when the when the hype dies, you're kinda left with like the, the real supporters. I think anyways. Again, not financial yeah. advice. But um yeah, it's really hard to tell. Because like my friend wanted to to buy into Funkles and because he was traveling a lot, he was like, it's really hard to know when they're going to mint Kuma. Like, I really want to buy a Funkle or mint a Funkle. But, like, he say, like he actually um, reserved, like, you know, had a day, like, in the calendar for, okay, this day is the minting day for Funkle. Oh, wait, they're, they're postponing it. Oh, okay, no, this is the new day. Oh, they're postponing it again. So he actually, mint, like, missed the mint date because they kept changing it. And then he was like, oh, I'm not buying it. It's too, it's too much hassle. <laughs> So yeah, I guess it's like when when projects do that, sometimes it it can affect the the project momentum. Mm. Yeah, GLT. It's really hard to tell what the market is doing right now. I mean, I don't even know why certain metas are in like like say when does the cute meta start? When does the anime meta start? Or when does weird art meta start? You know. It's like, who controls these things? You know, is, is it? I, I feel like it's the influencers at the end of the day that the, that the NFT Illuminati. Yeah. <laughs> right, guys, we're gonna gather. Which meta are we going to pump this term? Like Azuki is hundred hundred percent coordinated by the whales. Yeah, I mean, but like they had their new. They I think they pumped because of the airdrop that they didn't announce. So people are like, "Oh, are they going to do another airdrop? We should kind of start buying more Azukis." I think. Yeah, that's true. GLT was like, I think when a project dumps hard. The hard part about buying in is that you know there's going to be a lot of people wanting to dump on exit if ever it gets volume again. Yeah, that is true. Because then you never know, right? So you're kind of thinking, oh, okay, now it's too low. The next pump, just to kind of exit and get some sort of a profit, people are kind of waiting for the next pump to dump. Yeah, I wish I was at that Azuki party. It looks it looks so cool. Same with the doodles. I wish I was at the doodles party. Damn. So sad. Why why are all the events in, in America? Like what about all of us in, in Asia, in Europe, in, in other parts of the world that would also like to join these parties? Sad. I could be a bit <laughs> a party in Malaysia. What's your party in Malaysia? Uh, the tiger beer NFT. Oh, 
I saw that. That looked really fun. Roro and 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 then then and all them were there, right? No, well, Zen wasn't there. I was there. You were there. Zen's in, Zen's in, uh, in Indonesia. Oh, uh, true. Wait, who else was? Well, was uh, Win Win was there. There was CC another was there, girl yeah. there. CC, yeah, CC yeah. was there. Eight Asians was there as well. Ancient. Asians. Asians. Ah, oh, I get it. Yeah, yeah, Asians. Nice, nice. Um. Yeah, maybe we should organize one for Europe. I mean, I'm in Brazil right now, but like when I get back to Ireland, maybe we'll organize one yes. in. You're in Brazil now. I am in Brazil now. I'll be here for. I, I'm actually going to be here up until New York. So, are you going to New York, TJ? Uh, what? What? For NFT NYC. No. no. Not going anywhere. <laughs> Maybe there'd be like NFT S I N G. <laughs> no, this NFT. this is what the metaverse is for, okay? So there's no borders. There's no discrimination. Yeah. That's true. No picking and the choosing. The metaverse were all the same. There's no borders. Yeah. Dan Dan's like Kumo. If I buy one Kumo, will you buy me a plane ticket to NYC? I mean. A metaverse ticket? <laughs> we'll we'll live stream it. <laughs> buy ten um, kumos. Buy buy ten kumos, and then I'll think about that. <laughs> buy my ten kumos. Now and then I can be able to afford afford your plane ticket. Um, but no, I think we're going to try and organize um, like events in different parts of the world that's not in America. I feel like you know the Asians and also the the Europeans get left out a lot, and it's it's not really fair. Like why why America? Sorry for any Americans here. Why America? No no other words. <laughs> why not why not like you know Indonesia or somewhere that's closer to the other other collect collectives you could say. Um. Let's have a beach party. Guys, party in Brazil. Let's let's come to Brazil. <laughs> or Philippines. Yeah, maybe we should do like a, a poll to see like which country people are in. And so we can kind of like organize like meetups. What happened to SSS and the, the, the Bali trip? The which? SSS, Superlative Secret Society. Yeah, and they have like a thing in Bali though. They have like a muse. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know what happened to that project. I don't know either. I think, uh, I think they promised like all the holders can go go to Bali for free or something. And then they kept downscaling it. They did really well, right? They they had to they were doing so well for so long. Was that do you think it's like a, a slow rug? <laughs> <laughs> Not saying anything, guys. Not saying nothing. I think the art is cool. The end. <laughs> um, yeah. Is Kumo a slow rug? Is Kumo a slow rug? We're a slow rug. <laughs> long, long term, guys. Long term. Long term rug. We'll, we'll rug you in the long term. Be patient. Long term. <laughs> patience. You need patience if you want to if you want to check out this rug. The hard um, D-list. Huddle, D-list, and then you'll you'll get to experience this slow rug, long term. We're in it for the long term, right? A five year rug, exactly, agent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyone listening into this, guys, list your Kubo, sell it cheap now. Thank you, thank you. I bow, applaud. Thanks, guys. Thanks for your support. Um, no, we're actually working on the on the Kumojis now, and Topper is doing doing some really awesome stuff. So I guess like the <laughs> Kumo pudding, Kumo. <laughs> I'm putting uh, my own project. I spread give me, give the rumors. Give me inside Alpha before you announce it. Then I'll I'll sweep Kumo. Oh oh oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, maybe maybe Topper can talk. Actually, Topper. Uh, <laughs> 
Topper's like muted. No, I'm not going to say nothing. Um, I guess like the the fun thing with what we're doing with the with the next collection is that you know how like projects have their the same pose. Like it's usually like your the front or the side or whatever pose that <laughs> Topper's. I'm no. not saying anything. Um, so yeah, so like with the next collection the rarity is going to be based on their poses so it's not going to be all like front facing they're because they're, they're kumochis right so they're going to have like you could say they're kind of like pokemon things where they have like um uh we have like you know the way there's not just one pikachu or one bulbasaur there's like Pikachu, but there's lots of Pikachu that people can own, and there's lots of Bulbasaur, so it's kind of like that, where we have, like, the same species or type, but then the so rarity saying, goes... You're saying it's a lazy crash crab? You could say that, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> but it's going to be, like, uh, instead of having, like, different traits where you have, like... Uh, like 20, 40, 100, like, hats or clothes or glasses or whatever it is. Um, <laughs> Topper said, <laughs> you need to write your little trick. <laughs> like, don't down, down devalue my, my skills. <laughs> I love that. I love the Topper. <laughs> Um, yeah, so there, there's actually a lot more drawing than uh, <laughs> than I had for the for the the real collection, the the main collection. So Topper is actually drawing each because each pose has like so each <laughs> each type has uh, has like a different uh, like the different Kumochi base has different traits, right? There's gonna be ten traits for each base, and each of those will have their own pose. And so the rarity is kind of uh <laughs> Tower's like give up Kumo, it's impossible to explain. Yeah, it's really hard to explain. Um, but we'll we will drop the sneak peek soon enough and it's it is really cute. Yeah, Topper made the system and he finds it un- like, you know, difficult. <laughs> Topper, I made the system. I can't even understand what you're saying. Thanks. I mean explain yeah. like I'm five. Explain like you're five. There will be different species with different traits. And these species will have their own poses with the different traits. And the rarities will be based on those. Did I do it right, Topper? (laughs) I mean, Topper's the one who wrote it. Taking notes, yes. Uh, close enough, yeah. It's super cute. It's super cute. Um, it's so cute. I don't know if you want to show them, like a flash, like really quickly. Drop it and then delete it. Into resident chat. You want to just just tease. No screen grabs, right? Right, guys? No screen grabs. We're just literally going to drop it really fast in residence. And then we're going to <laughs> screen record start now. <laughs> right. No. I mean, we trust you guys a lot. So we're going to drop it. I mean, not me. Topper's going to drop it into residence chat and then delete it after like three seconds. It's on Twitter. <laughs> this is like a. Uh, delete delete <laughs> yeah so that's just one of the kumochis that is going to be uh in the collection i think yeah so they have all they all have different poses and they have different traits different faces um so yeah there's a lot of really cool things that that topper is doing with uh with with the kimochis and I think you guys will all really like it if you like cute things. So yeah, that's 
That's a, a little bit of alpha, a little bit of alpha. I mean, foodie, you must have had a very long blink, like polite nap blink. I am actually going to jump on to Yeah. <laughs> and the poses are really cute, like really cute. Um, how many <laughs> agents explore to no like yeah, Spider Man pose? Um, yeah, like how many was it like what six six ten ten traits and six poses or something like that? But yeah, they're all they're all really cute is all I can say. We have a channel for for all the stuff that Topper does and he drops them in and we're all like, oh my god, they're so cute. So he is doing an awesome job. Um and we're just super excited to to show you guys when it's done. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Oh and also for you guys who are here and that had a Kumo I think since let me just check. Yeah. If you guys have had your Kumos like since two weeks ago, was it? Oh, since March the 20th, um, you should all have your uh, book token in your hidden tab. And that is to access the storybook, which we are going to launch in the next few days. We're just trying to figure out which is the best uh, way to launch it um, for the book tokens. So the book token is in your hidden tab uh, or or unhidden if that's what it is. Um, the which is what you mean, which is Freeman? The Kumochis. So the Kumochis won't be a Freeman. However, it's going to be a private sale. So there won't be any public minting process with the Kumochis. Um, it's all going to be private, so everyone here who owns uh, a Kumochi, or not, who owns a Kumo resident, so everyone who owns a Kumo resident will be whitelisted for, um, for a Kumochi. So for each resident you own, you'll be able to mint one Kumochi. And then there will be more. I think, I think the, the total supply that we're looking for is... 8,888 and it's going to be quite a low it's not going to be a high mint price at all it's nothing ridiculous like 0.1 or 0.2 or whatever and then um then you have our partners like our long-term partners where we, like we will send some white lists to them so that they can also mint as well but there's going to be a bit of a gameplay you could say that you guys will have priority to mint first and if they're um yeah okay i will have to think about how to explain this without confusing people but yes there will be only whitelist sales no no public sales 
Yeah, Pixelmon version 2. <laughs> Will there be a Kevin Kumo? Uh, Kumoji? Will there be a <laughs> Kevin Kumo? I mean, I mean, should we make a Kevin Kumo? It won't be a Kumochi anyway, the Kevin Kumo. <laughs> Topper's like, what's Kevin? Someone want to explain to Topper what, what Kevin is? Or who Kevin is? TJ, feel free. Kevin, um... Please explain. Yeah, that's Kevin. Go for it. <laughs> you, you know like how every religion has a messiah figure? Yeah. And in NFTs, Kevin is that figure. The Messiah. <laughs> He's become the like a very important, um, an important figure in in the NFT space. A legend. Yes. He like Kevin probably wasn't even uh that that popular and and now he's probably going to be like the most how much for a kevin how much for a kevin i don't know did kevin actually sell they're they're like kevin derivative projects right you, you know i had a kevin after after reveal and i sold it for like 0.8 what you had a kevin Wow. That's the that's a huge L. I, I lost a lot of money on Pixelmon. <laughs> oh that yeah. I mean Because that was that was like it? right after reveal, you know, like where with all the FUD and there was there was no demand for Kevin yet. That that ha that took a few days to happen. Yeah. I mean I, I would also be like when if I was to see my Kevin post reveal and not expecting it to be that bad, I'd be like, I need to sell this ASAP. It's, it's not even a rare <laughs> Pixelmon. No, exactly. Why, why, why Kevin? Why Kevin? Like, why not the other ones that were revealed? Because it's a symbol of how shitty Pixelmon is. <laughs> that is that is true. That is true. You you sold the 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 Messiah the Messiah of um of Pixelmon of NFTs. Um, I mean, we, we could, we could, we could, I actually said to, to the team, like, maybe I should do a Kumo Kevin just for laughs, just for a laugh. Um, yes, people are interested. <laughs> oh, Topper's, Topper's doing a Kevin Kumochi. <laughs> we could do a Kevin Kumochi and a Kevin Kumo, will we? And then we'll uh, and then and bring them up in a in a random expedition, <laughs> or start. Yeah, I mean, just for fun, right? Well, we we could we could do it just for fun. Toffer, start working on the kumochis. Stop getting sidetracked. <laughs> no more Kevins. No more Kevinchi. Kevinchi. It's a Kevinchi. That person that needed a a plane a plane ticket donated to that person. <laughs> okay, sorry, we're getting sidetracked here. Um, this 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 workshop has turned into just like general general banter, general chit chat. Um, yeah, agent, we wild, we wild. This is, this is how we roll. This is how TJ rolls. How the foo rolls. Oh yeah, did you guys all get your PO app? Your PO app badge? I'm guessing you all did. Um, yeah, cool. If if you guys only joined, this is PO app is is a, it's a what's a proof of attendance protocol. So that's the that's the secret code. So you just I, I posted there, it's like TJF in capital letters and zero, zero. Yeah, exactly, those other zeros. And you need to, I guess, claim it from the mobile application because there's a part where you can just like claim using secret code. You need to download the app, Zoe, on your phone. 
for days, but we only had it for today, agent. <laughs> it was only an hour ago. <laughs> minutes yeah i know in the nft space it seems like days but it, it was only just over an hour ago but that's okay maybe two hours maybe two hours yeah we'll we'll, we'll have two hours there yay awesome good stuff guys good stuff um okay so i think that is really it for today. We talked about a lot of stuff. Does anyone have anything they'd like to ask myself or TJ or Toffer or anybody? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Drum rolls. That was a terrible drum roll. I can't, I can't do drum roll with, with, with sound. But um, but um, but um, but um, but um, but um. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, congratulations. The whale solved the expedition puzzles. So did, so did the, actually who, who solved the, let me just double check. So the only ones yet to solve it are the phoenixes. They're the only ones that have yet to solve it. And let me see who solved it first. The whale solved it first. And then the wolves, and then what's left is the phoenix. You guys are doing well, you know. I'm I'm pr I'm proud of you. I'm a proud mama. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations. Um. <laughs> I mean, you guys feel free to ask the wolves and the and the and the whales like how they solved it. You know, Share, sharing is caring, guys. Just saying. Um. So yeah. So that is that. If nobody has any questions regarding the workshop, then I am going to wrap it up. TJ, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Um, happy birthday, Kumo. Pew, pew, pew. Pew, 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 pew. Thank you. Thank you for, for being here, TJ, and, and sharing your awesome awesomeness with us it was really nice to have you long time no chat it was really good to chat with you again um and yeah definitely could hang out more we should all hang out more i think um this sorry i'm just dungeon. watching yeah exactly i'm actually just looking at my um my laptop because i, I switched over to my phone because it says that my laptop is upgrading and and uh, it, I'm just watching my my laptop slowly shut down, like very slowly shutting down. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, it's just, it's restarting now. Cool. Okay, I don't I don't need that. Did I send it already? I don't know. Don't save. Okay, yeah, it's restarting. Sorry, I got distracted. But yes, definitely we should we should do more chill sessions like this where we're just chatting and, and just hanging out. I think it's fun to hang out with you all. Um and and feel free to come in. Uh Rinja, I see as well. Riri's here. Um and we can just bend, we can bend just... off other projects. Which? Just bend off other projects. Sorry, I can't hear you, TJ. What would you say there? Bad, bad mouth other projects. <laughs> bad mouth other projects. <laughs> we are not bad mouthing no one. We're just sharing our personal opinions on different projects, which, which may have different. Uh, we have different opinions on. Whose birthday is it? Happy birthday, someone. Wait, whose birthday is it? My birthday? Oh, no. Is it my oh, birthday? That, that was a troll. Thanks. Oh, did you say happy birthday to me? <laughs> <laughs> I did not hear that. <laughs> Wait, what? Is it my birthday? Oh, thanks. Thanks. Um, thank you all for the for the birthday wish. Oh, you're all so kind. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for the birthday wish, guys. I love I love you all. <laughs> it's my birthday every day, okay? Um, yeah. 
I think it's it's really it's interesting like to talk to uh to talk to people about you know projects and stuff it doesn't necessarily have to be you know uh like as as a uh, formal as like setting up a workshop maybe like someday we can just jump into voice chat and just you know it anyone is is uh, welcome to do that just to jump into voice chat and we could just talk about projects or or life or birthdays or whatever else you guys want to talk about.